Hi, I'm Dominic Robson Neal. I'm Zell Folks, and this is Inside the Ropes Boxing Show. Dominic Robinson Neal. Got another episode of Inside the Ropes. I got my co co host, Marlon Clemens. And today we're going to talk about uh, up and coming fights. All right. So the first up and coming fight we're going to talk about is Jalen Priston. He got his uh, fight coming up um, June 10th at Jamil Shrine Temple. We got a, a decent opponent, a tough opponent. Uh, we're going to go out here and do what we do. We've been having having a good training camp, uh, twice a day, some good sparring. Hey, we 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 ready. Definitely. And Jimmy in trouble come June tenth. Definitely going to the body <laughs> early. <laughs> Look out for the horseman. Yeah. He's definitely gonna put on the show. Camp's been real good. Like Coach said, the sparring been excellent. Um, definitely ready to perform. Also, we got a. A few major fights coming up. We finally got the Spence and Bud Crawford fight. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. for yeah. This whole this should be twelve the, months. Hopefully, this is a fight of the decade. <laughs> we gonna get to see some sparks, some you know, We're what I'm saying? fishing. Yeah, fishing. That fish gonna drown. You ever saw a fish drown? <laughs> this <laughs> this is gonna be the first fish that ever get drowned. Errol Spence gonna get drowned okay. with his own. If you think Spence gonna win, you don't know shit about boxing. <laughs> <laughs> Sound oh, like he got money on Crawford. I do. <laughs> I do. I, I'm going to get the 401k. I'm going to get it all, baby. I'm putting it all. I'm letting it all ride. I'm putting it all on one. I, I'm going. Either I'm going to be rich or I'm going to be in the soup line. So one or the other. There ain't no in between. We're going to move some furniture in here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you might be in here. Remember that now. We got to do a room open. So you might be up in here. You're the whole family. <laughs> but now we got some good fights coming up. We got uh, Stevie Fulton and Monster Inaway. Ooh, that's going to be a good one. fight. That's probably going to be... I can't ooh, wait that's, for that one. Stevie Fulton and Monster. That's going to be a great... That's going to be a great Who fight. Who you liking that fight? Man, I got to go with Monster. He's, he's real technical. He's real strong. Real solid. He fundamentally sound. And a lot of times a good fighter who's fundamentally sound, they hard to beat. You know, even if they basic, they still hard to beat. You know what I'm saying? Technically like Spence. Spence is basic, but he fundamentally sound. He can actually box. He just good at, here you go. Crawford got a lot of tools in the toolbox. Spence have maybe one or two tools, but he great with them. Right. So you could be good. Let's like, let's prime example. This, I'm going to break it down for you. Mike Tyson was great offensively. He was great offensively. Could explode, whatever. Holyfield was good at everything. Defense, offense, heart, stamina. So he was good, he was great, but he was great at one thing. He was good at all of them, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, you know, sometimes one, a fighter might, like, if you look at Stevie Fulton, Stevie Fulton is fast, has more of an urban style, he's a mover. Monster is, like, technically sound in all aspects of it, you know what I'm saying? So I find myself going back and forth. I, I like both fighters. Um, Monster has never sparred an African-American or fought one. Do you feel like that's going to make a difference? Well, Stevie never... Fool, they never fought a Japanese joker. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. And it's, it's, it's in Japan. It's in Japan, so you know what I'm saying. So that's a lot of things coming to play. Who else got? Uh, we got fighting coming up. Uh, Tio and Josh Taylor. Tio Fimo, Lo Tio, uh, Tio Fimo Lopez and Josh Taylor. That should be a great fight. Uh, and what I think will probably happen is Devin will fight the uh, Devin gonna fight to end up fighting the winner out of them too, and move up to probably 140 and come back down to 35. But. Uh, I like, man, for some reason, I like Tiafimo Lopez on that one. I love Tio. You know, yeah, I, I'm probably one of the last few people hanging on to his bandwagon, even though he's been going through a lot, you know, with what he's saying about ESPN siding with black fighters. I think this is a make or break fight for Tio right here. He's got to show up and show out. Um, go ahead. 
Oh, so what do you think about Ryan and Roley? Ryan Garcia, Roley Rivera. Now, see, a fight like that, that fight is going to sell because of the two people. Personalities. Yeah, it won't. It probably, it, it probably won't be the most tactical matchup ever. It probably won't even be a good fight. I think but, uh, Ryan KO's Roley. Yeah, I, honestly, I do too. I think he F Roley up. <laughs> um, I don't like talking about coaching, but I don't think Bullet is the right coach for Roley. Mm. I think I think Roley needs to get under some better leadership. Um, I think Roley has potential. He he has potential. Um, he just needs. Man, to I'm be real with you, man. Roley ass. Roly got no fundamentals. Nothing. Ro Roly need to be taught from scratch again. You just hit it on the head. He, right. He needs to be taught. But when you get a fighter that old, you get a dog that How old. How old is Roly? It, it don't matter. He he ain't gonna change from what he know. He gonna no matter what. If he get out there and get in crunch time, you can teach him all of new stuff. Mm -hmm. But as soon as he get in crunch time, you know what he gonna do? He gonna go back to what he know, cause he feels safe with that. Right. So when he go back to what he know, he probably get hurt, knocked out, or something like that. But a fighter like Roley, if they already fundamentally messed up when you get them, right. you just got to add to that. You got to be able to add something to that to make him great or make him better because what happens is he come with that flaw style and any other good coach on the other side, he already got a remedy for it. Okay, he can't fight this, do this, do that. We'll pop on it. So what you got to do with a fighter who, just say you get a guy in here 24, 25 years old, you start working with him. Roley, 27. Okay. okay. So he let's say he, and he's fundamentally flawed, right? He's fundamentally flawed. You got to be able to add on to that fundamental that because he ain't gonna really listen. I bring your hand back, y'all. He he it's too late for that. Yeah, it's too late for that because it's already instilled in him. That's like when you go and I'm gonna tell you why the fighter always go back to what he know. That's like if you go to the DMV to get your driver's license. When you get that driver's license, you got to drive at the ten and two. Mm -hmm. Now, once you get your license, you can drive that car any way you want. Boom, boom, boom. You can be like Zed whipping it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but as soon as you get ready to crash that car, what's the first thing you do? Ten and two. You go baby. back to the ten and two. You go back to what you know, right. the fundamentals. But if you was never taught the fundamentals, mm -hmm. you ain't got nothing to go back to. That's why it's hard for a guy like him. But he'll never he, he could give a dog on the greatest trainer ever. Whoever that might be, whoever you consider that, and he ain't gonna change. Ryan Garcia got flaws, but he he with uh, Errol Spence team now. So you 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 saying that uh, Derrick James not gonna be able to? No, he gonna he gonna have him looking like a a, a decent fighter, Derrick James, because he's a good coach, mm -hmm. coach of the year three times. But he he, but when he get in that fire, it don't matter what he doing. When we just out here playing around, and you looking good for that YouTube and the camera. When he get in that fire fight out there, in that truth machine right there, that's going to really tell if whatever Derrick James told him, if it worked. When he get up on the fire and somebody on his ass, right. that's when you're going to find out if what this man taught him, you know, if it worked. Or if he's going to go back to what he's doing. And most of the time, them guys go back to what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Well, the knock on Ryan has always been his uh, discipline and his work ethic. Correct. He, he done been, been how many coaches with, he done been with? He was with Canelo team. Then he went with... To Goose. Goosen. But who was he with with Canelo team before then? He was right. with somebody. Oh, he was? Yeah. He what wasn't was always with, he went with Canelo. Oh, you're right, you're right, yeah. you're right, you're right. He went right. with Canelo. But so if a guy flop coaches all the time, that means first of all, he probably ain't loyal. If, if a guy had five coaches before he got to me, I know it's something up. You it's know what I'm saying? Mean, yeah. and, or he not listening or he not paying attention. It's something up with that. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, it is what it is. Oscar De La Hoya used to do that too. He had about four or five coaches. This guy coached him, that guy coached him. But it ain't, you know what I'm saying? The trainer's only good as the man on the stool. You can't take a mule Correct. to the Kentucky Derby and win. It ain't happening. I don't care who you are. You know what I'm saying? So, what else, dog? Clarissa Shields fight coming up. She, she got a new opponent. Right, right. Um, who, else come, who else got a fight coming up? I think, I think, uh, we, I mean, if we're looking at the end of the year, Wilder and Joshua. Wilder and Joshua, that should be that should be entertaining for And the what about Keyshawn? But, but they're also saying, well, is he Keyshawn and um, the uh, dude. I don't he's know supposed who to Keyshawn fight soon, fight. too. Nah, the dude from Cuba came over that beat Keyshawn. Um, what's the guy's name? I'm looking for it. Beat him in the amateurs, right? Yeah. Um, Andy Cruz. Andy Cruz. But I don't know if that fight's been made yet. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, well, we, well, that's good. Well, that's good for boxing. You know, got yeah. some fights coming up. Three been a good year. And for then boxing. you know, everybody yeah. fighting everybody. But I think Tank and Ryan really set it off when they fought each other. They made other guys hold their feet to the fire. Then Devin and Loma. You know, a lot of people think Devin won. A lot of people think Loma won. But they fought each other. That's what you guys missing. Right. They actually the best fought the best. Somebody had to win. Somebody got to lose. But that's part of the game. So now it's making it's holding other people to. Because we weren't talking about no Errol and uh, Errol and Crawford fight until Tank of them. Now that it came back up, mm-hmm. I guess it's like, man, they fighting. Right, let's get we it. We fighting, you know. And then they're talking about the rematch might be done before the end of the year too, so we might get them twice before. Yeah, the that, you're right. Wow. So the, it could go right back in camp. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. Well, well, like I said, come on out June 10th. Jamil Shrine Temple, Jalen Prison got another fight. Uh, we're gonna be ready. Robinson Neal Boston Academy went full effect. We all gonna do it for this year, the 19, the 2023. I said night, I'm about to say 1923. <laughs> 2023. Anything you wanna say, coach? Nah, come out, support, show love. June 10th, it's gonna be a show. That's right. So this was another exciting episode of Inside the Ropes. I'm Dominic Robinson Neal. Who are you, man? (laughs) I'm Coach Marlin. Coach Marlin, and hey, we out. Thank you.